What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. Yes, for the first time in like almost 900 videos, I have a hat. My hair's going crazy, I'm growing it out, um, and it's just like, it's kind of like an afro right now. I don't have any hair gel, so I have a hat on. I gotta keep a lid on this. Anyhow, I was on Dribble, and as I commonly do every few days, just to see if there's any new emerging trends to see what's going on, and I spotted something very interesting. Um, here, here. Here, we have something interesting happening and there's also a number of other ones I'm gonna show you. So what's happening here? We're ha I'm seeing a usage of these types of colored backgrounds. I would not call them gradients. Um, they're more just, you know, very, you know, very blurry, very soft, multiple hues of colors that are converging with each other. Now, of course, this isn't new. I mean, this has been done a long time ago, but I'm starting to see people use it more and more um, at least just by looking at Dribbble um, today. Here's another example. This is more of like a traditional gradient where you're going from one color to another, but they are different hues. Um, here's another one. You can see it in this card and also the background here. We have like green and this sort of burnt orange color. Um, we can see this is more of like a, what's it called? A conical gradient. Um, also right here, you can see there's a little bit of like uh, orange and uh, kind of like this yellowish color right here. Here's another example. This is a texture background. I'll show you how to do that. And also right here, these are all from the front page of dribble.com. So I thought it would be interesting to show you exactly how you can create these because you can achieve them, most of them at least, with just HTML and CSS or even SVG. So we're gonna be stepping into Adobe Photoshop to create this background and I'll show, it's actually really fun. Uh, it's, it's a really cool technique to use essentially and, I'll, and then I'll show you and bring it full circle into Adobe XD with an actual user interface. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Uh, but wait one second, I'm about to show you a really cool UI design technique, but what if you're absolute garbage when it comes to UI design and you're a beginner? Well, make sure to take my UI design bootcamp at the sponsor of this video, scrimba.com. At scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, 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 you're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So visit the very first line in the description of this YouTube video to access my course along with many others for a very low monthly fee. All right, so we're first gonna get started here in Adobe Photoshop uh, to create the background. So I'm gonna just choose 1920 uh, by 1080. That way we're doing desktop first um, the largest size first. Of course, this could be scaled up to 4K, but if you went 4K and you exported a 4K image, it would be really large in file size. This, you can get it down to like 40 KB or something, um, and it, it still doesn't look too bad. It'll have a little bit of a texture to it, and I'll, I'll show you something about the texture too, a little uh, tip if I can remember at the end. But um, we're gonna start with 1920 by 1080 here in Photoshop, it's hit Create. And you saw the other one that I did before. Um, we're gonna just basically recreate that so I can show you how I did it. Um, so the first thing, we're gonna get a base layer down. So I'm, I'm going to choose the paint, paint bucket tool. We're gonna go to um, Window, um, Workspace, just choose this Essentials, that way your space is set up like mine. Although I don't need this big large panel over there. And we have to choose a good base color. Sometimes people choose black or close to black, but for, for this uh, effect, I wanna choose something darker. Um, and it's gonna be, you know, around this, uh, it's right between, you know, like purple and blue. It's right here in this area. And I'm gonna choose something that's desaturated. So this, again, this is really saturated. And then this is desaturated completely over in this column. And then <clears throat> somewhere, somewhere pretty dark. So, you know, I might choose something like right here. The color code for that is 282030. And then I, I will fill the background here. So I like the look of that. Um, now we're going to place some color here on different layers. So that's a background layer. We're gonna get Control Shift N for a new layer and hit OK. And then we're going to use the paintbrush tool. All right, so I, I have it at 1,000 pixels, anywhere between you know 800 or 700 to um, 1200 pixels will work pretty well based on this size here at least. Um, and we're going to stay in the same hue but just drive the brightness up, um, you know, considerably, you know, like right around there. Um, and so now I'm going to just place a blob here. 
Maybe another blob there. Looks really stupid. Um, so then we're gonna create another layer and we're gonna work in a different hue this time. I put this one, the new layer beneath the other layer here though. And for this one, we're gonna come up, you know, somewhere like right around here. And maybe do something like that. Yeah, I guess. And what's really cool now is um, we're gonna find a way, instead of them, you know, just them being the, these circles, a really soft uh, brush, by the way, it, uh, the hardness is at 0%. Uh, we're gonna use this tool right here, which is the smudge tool. So you could take the strength and boost it all the way up to like a thousand or 100%, and then the size is pretty large at 800. And you could start to play around with moving these so that they don't just look like perfect circular, you know, blurry blob things. So if I choose uh, this layer right here, we could start to pull these around. And you know what? It's funny. You can kind of start to hear in, in my, I can hear in my speakers when the processor or the graphics card is really working hard because this is kind of like a hardware intensive uh, thing for Photoshop to do. Um, and you can just start to pull these around and have fun with it. Now, if, I will say this, if you go like up and you're near a corner, that happens. So try to stay away from your corners when you're molding and shifting this light. Yeah, we'll leave that here for now. Um, and again, you could just start to play around with this stuff. Again, you don't wanna go that way. Now we have kind of have an interesting thing. Let's create another layer. This time I'm going to use like white. Maybe I'll make the size, yeah, the size is fine. Well, no, let's make the size of this one. Maybe let's try 800. All right, and then I can go back to the smudge tool. So again, you may have to undo Control Z a few times to find out something that you like. That's kind of cool. It's not perfect circle though. That one's a little bit too much, so I might come over here. And again, just play around with it until you get something that you ultimately like. Maybe I'll stop it like right there. That's kind of cool like that. And of course, because we do, you know, we did put these on different layers, you can move them around and just have fun with it. Let me go back to this uh, pink one here. I think that's a little bit too much over there. We'll go back to this blue one. Maybe we'll take some of that blue over here. There we go. And like I said, just ultimately have fun with it. Um, we could also take the eraser tool, um, for instance, we take this white one. We could start to just get rid of some things. Like I didn't, I thought that was a little strange looking. Although I might leave it actually. But you get the point. At this point, you know, like I said, you can uh, just keep on experimenting with something that you know maybe you like. I think this looks pretty cool. Um, that tip I was talking about to give it texture. Um, we could take. Uh, let's see, all these and merge them, control E by selecting them all, and then going to filter, noise, add noise. Now that's way too much, but we come down here. You can give it kind of like a very subtle, like seriously at like 1% or 2%. Let's put one in there. It's a very subtle texture that you can give it. So it makes it look a little bit interesting. I'm not gonna do that though. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Um, I kind of like this one even a little bit better that I created. And another tip I'll give you um, is you can play around with, uh, especially if you use an adjustment layer, um, we can do like hue and saturation. This will bump everything up. We can change the colors like that. I don't want to do that though. You could take the saturation up a little bit on stuff. Wow, that looks cool. Let's keep that. 
So we really bumped the saturation up and it just affected things differently. All right, so now uh, let's go ahead and say we like this and then go ahead and export it. So um, if you wanna save this, I, I always use the, well, I think this is deprecated, but it's Control Shift Alt S and that's save for web. And we'll go to JPEG. You don't wanna use a PNG for this. Uh, the file size at 74% quality is, uh, let's see here, 70 KB. Again, if you give it that texture, you can get away with really squashing it. Um, it still doesn't look bad here. Of course, if you have it expanding uh, when it's in the front end development stage on a browser on a 4K maximized, you know, it might look a little bit worse. But still, this is 40 KB. Um, so that's just a, a couple tips. Like if we change this to a PNG 8, it's going to make it a 424 kilobyte f you know, file. So you don't want that. Um, I'm not going to export. I'm just going to hit uh, Control A to select all and then Control Shift C to copy. And then, although it's already on one layer, so we can hit Control C just to copy. And then we're going to go to Adobe XD. I, I have it open on a different browser. Let me open this up. Here we go. So now we're going to go to Web 1920. And let's just see what this, this background that we created looks like on a basic user interface. Wow, that looks really cool. I like that. All right, so what I really love about it is just it's just so organic looking um, or creative in a way. So I I'm not going to bother here uh, designing everything from scratch. I'm just going to paste in elements. So we have a nice solid headline. Maybe we have a nice solid sub headline right here. We'll put that like right there. All right, and then maybe we have some sort of interesting things right here. None of these really make sense, but th the design is cool. I like the design. Uh, I designed these earlier. Um, and then maybe we have a menu, an interesting type of um, non-typical menu, maybe right here. All right, and then maybe finally, this definitely looks like one of those modern designs where we're hijacking the cursor and creating our own. So maybe, you know, this will be the cursor right here. And look at that, just look, look how cool this looks. I love it, I really love it. Uh, of course, this is one of those things though, as trends tend to do, they get overplayed. So, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to do this on every freaking design that you have. Um, but yeah, hopefully uh, you've you know, learned something new uh, with this awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. I know I did, if you did, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment and a like, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.